Hello, uh, my name's Ian, aka Tiger Mendoza. Um, I did a track uh, using samples from Cities of Memory, uh, posted it to a couple of sites, and uh, there were a couple of questions about how I put the track together and how I pieced the track together from the various samples I used. So I thought I would put together a, a quick video to just kind of walk people through what my process was, how I pulled some samples together I, I used, and um, and a little bit about my the way the track was assembled. Anyway, um, so I'll just play a bit of the track in case you haven't heard it. It goes something like. <laughs> I'll go through the drum rack because I like drums, um, and you'll see really it's it, it's pretty it's a pretty standard drum rack. I mean it it it, it doesn't it's the samples I used were really just laid out like standard drums, uh, so not nothing too weird. Um, the samples themselves though I suppose could be considered a bit weird. So for example, if I zoom right out of that one, you'll see it's quite a long sample, and then the actual kick sound. Um, no, I said kickish. Um, is a teeny piece right in the middle of this here. Uh, so if I play my kick, it sounds like that. It's got a big boom sound. If I play the original, it sounds more like it. And I, I honestly couldn't tell you. Uh, it's from somewhere around. Ah. Oh. Yeah. Why So. That R you just heard, it became that. And how it, uh, well, it's a very small sample. Um, I tuned it right down by 24 uh, steps, eight steps, or two octaves worth. So if I tune it back up, a tiny little snippet. Um, and then if I make it a bit longer, oh. Starts to sound more like the original vocal sound. So if I do that all again, you get boom. Um, also, just to make it a bit, give it a bit more depth, I added uh, the sub kick maker in uh, from Ableton's um, Corpus uh, effect, um, which is which is just great for making good booming kick drums. Um, similar process for the rest of these things. So um, standard thing where you just find a, a snare drum or a snare kind of thing you could think would work as a kind of snare or a tap hit so if I go for uh, that one open up this sample uh, just a short hit off the reverb from there um, if I play just a snare sound on its own like that and it's again it's just a tap from the track Add reverb to it, add my glue compressor to the end, so you get a bit more punch and you get much more useful. So, I've got a rattle, which I think is a hi hat sound, I've got my snare, I've got a snap, a uh, crazy little bit of, I don't know what it is, kind of, kind of reversed um, thing. Uh, um, that's the kick that I showed you, that's the second snap. So I can't use it as percussion, and um, the only thing is I couldn't really find something that would work really well as a um, as a crash. So I just use this just a bit of a noise really with uh, a bit reduction and some filter delay to act as a kind of crash ish, I suppose. Um, drum rack then got a bit of saturation on it, glue compressor afterwards. And that's it. You just again, it's just a. It really is just a drum rack. So, just the the samples aren't just your standard kick snare samples. So, um, I've got my uh, individual uh, drums laid out as individual channels uh, on here, and they all feed into the. Um, I will feed into this MIDI channel. Um, you can see here. Uh, that means I can set up my drum rack on one channel and then have manage all the elements individually. So if I play just the kicks here, boom, it's just the snare. Uh, 
sound and percussion. That's kind of the beat carried the whole track. So that's the drums. Um, and uh, in the next video, uh, there is a part two of this, um, I will show you how I did the pads. Uh, very, very similar way, just obviously they're pitched. So, walk through that in a bit. Thanks very much.